it was truly just grinding and continuing to play the game and like passing people up that way because like every minute I wasn't on the game, I knew somebody else was trying to pass me up. The thing is that getting SSL, to be honest, that's like barely halfway on your journey to going pro. Things are gonna get rough and what you do next is crucial. If you wanna know what it's really like to be a pro Rocket League player, meet Zanil. What on earth was that touch? Beautiful pass downfield from Taroko, but look at the flick on from Zanil. At just 18 years old, Zanil has amounted over $30,000 in tournament winnings while competing in arguably the most competitive region in the world. I'm talking about North America here. North America is the best region in the world. Only had two apiece, but they get one off a own goal there, so... This is my channel, and I will say what I want. Jokes aside, today, you're gonna learn three things. Number one, you'll get Zanil's formula to going pro. Number two, you'll learn what it takes to make it at each level of competitive Rocket League. And finally, number three, you'll also learn the dark side of being a young pro. At this point now, you, you kind of have to build your schedule around Rocket League because it takes so much time up. So boot up free play, cut out distractions, and listen in to our conversation, and I don't think you'll regret it. This is episode six of the Free Play Podcast. But first, I want to show you a program that's helped over 3,000 average Rocket League players get to the top 1% of this game. Our video sponsor today is the Grand Champ Bootcamp, Rocket League's leading 12-week coaching bootcamp that, like it sounds, takes plats, diamonds, and champs up to GC. This program is designed to fast track you through the ranked ladder so you not just reach Grand Champ, but you reach Grand Champ before pulling out every last strand of your hair. To qualify for admission, you must have a minimum 200 ranked hours, be ranked platinum or higher, and play on PC to take full advantage of the program. If that's you and you're ready to cut the guesswork out of ranking up, DM their Discord account with the keyword pro to speak with a program expert and see if you qualify for coaching. I'll have their Discord first link in the description below. That's keyword pro to get details on coaching. Enjoy. Zanil, it's 2023. Rocket League came out in 2015. You were, what, 10 years old when this game released? And... We're now here. I'm 21. You're 18 years old. Yo. You've made over $30,000 playing Rocket League, and you did all this as a high schooler. How did you get here? Where where did, where did this start? What did, what, did, what did it take? So I'd say around, I, I got the game in in early 2016. It took a lot of sacrifice. I, I started out on a really bad laptop. I wasn't even like able to play ranked because I would lag. So I would just free play on like a really bad laptop. A year later for like Christmas, I got an Xbox One, played on that. And it was a lot better than the laptop, which tells you how bad that laptop was. <laughs> but uh played on that Xbox. I moved to PC around, I think 2020 or 2019 is when I moved to PC finally. But during those like four or so years on xbox it was just it was a grind like it was a lot of sacrifice i like i straight up had to forget what touching grass was because i was just i was <laughs> just grinding to improve it like took the mentality and the strength of a fortress not only in terms of ignoring the hate but also in terms of continuing to believe in the dream and like believe in myself to to not give it up yeah so walk me back four you spent four years until you switched on to off of console on a PC. Yep. And so take me back to 2016. Like you pick up this game. When was the first sign that you saw or that you had that like, oh, I'm sort of good at this game. Maybe it could be more than just, you know, something something you queue rank twos with your friends. Like when did, when did you know it could be something more? So like straight up, I didn't even know like pro play basically existed or that it was even a possibility until like, 20 like 19 or something like when i was like high or mid champion like rank i like that that's when i first found out about it and i didn't really even focus on going pro until i was like the highest rank in the game on pc and queuing six men's that's when i actually started to think like oh this could be a possibility but before that like before i even hit like mid champion i didn't even consider the possibility at all right I always have this question like when, when I'm talking with pros because I don't know about like people watching, but I feel like sometimes you look at somebody and you're just like, wow, they're <laughs> they're talented or they're gifted or like like this person just got it, right? Yeah. For you, was it something where you always like, you felt like you were progressing a little bit faster than your friends or was it like truly, you, you didn't feel like you were any better than anybody else until 
let's say 2019 three years after you had the game right yeah so a lot of people say like like there's two sides to it some people think like oh natural talent is a huge part of this game like you need it if you want to go somewhere and other people are like you just need you need the the work ethic right you need the motivation and me personally i didn't think i i had that natural talent that people were saying like i look back in my old clips and like compared to other pros old clips like i am so unmechanical when i look back at that stuff and it's like <laughs> like today i'm i'm like a lot more mechanical than like, like i'm i'm there with it and it's just it's kind of crazy to think about how like a lot of people say you need this natural talent or that you have to be young and all this and there's this like this belief about that but i don't really believe that and i don't think i follow that pathway because for me it was it was truly just grinding and continuing to play the game and like passing people up that way because like every minute i wasn't on the game i knew somebody else was trying to pass me up so it was like right i just i just kind of stayed motivated grinded and i i didn't really feel like i had that that improvement over people i will say though that in terms of connections i think being younger did help because if there's two players that are similar in skill and one of them is 16 and one of them is like 18 or 19, like whatever team is choosing or whatever like that is, they're probably going to be biased towards the 16 year old just because there's this belief that, you know, if you have that prodigy title, you're, you're just bound to be better than that other person quicker, which I don't necessarily believe, but that is a thing that exists. Yeah, I do. I'd love to talk about the age question because it's such a hot topic. But it's sort of like, um, it's sort of like you look at somebody who's young and you just think you can't help but think about the potential. But for you, as you were grinding, it was having that feeling hanging over your head of like, I'm not special. And like, if I don't, if I don't have however many hours a week, I will get passed. And you felt like that. Do you still feel like that? Uh, kind of, yeah. Because like a lot of these prodigies, man, they like they they have mostly all the mechanics, but. They don't have like the game sense usually, to be honest. Mm. And it's just like, I-, I didn't feel that way. I felt like I-, I did have the game sense, but the mechanics weren't crazy. Or at least maybe it was my playstyle that I was, I was more defensive naturally when it, when it came to my, my playstyle. When a lot of the prodigies you see are very offensive focused, I didn't feel like that was me. I felt more defensive. Even though I knew I still had good mechanics, I just, I didn't use them as much. So maybe they didn't shine as much as they could. But yeah. Yeah, I get what you mean. It's interesting because you have come onto the scene. I mean, I don't know if you could classify the Rocket League pro scene into into just one, two, or three waves, but I definitely feel like we have this kind of old age of pros, like this first gen pros, you know, 2015, 2016, 2017, when it was kind of like the Wild West, <laughs> where the RLCS just looked completely different. Then you sort of started to see it mature, where you have a lot of a lot of some of the older pros today. You know, I'm thinking back to 2018, 2019. You saw the squishies come onto the scene, the Garrett's come onto the scene, J Naps, Chicago. Yeah. That sort of gen, generation of player, many of which were still some of the best today. And then I I think we we sort of have this new generation of players, including you, coming onto the scene. Mm-hmm. You have the the Parth, two piece, Evo, me, cheese, like kind of kind of that group of people the two's grinders you could say it's kind of weird though because like i felt like when that that last wave of pros like started like to get on the come up they they kind of blended in and meshed in with the other top tier pros whereas i feel like with this group of players at least not yet maybe maybe this season it'll change and like we'll all take that one step up but i feel like that hasn't happened yet to where like any of these players have have landed on that top tier team top tier org whereas when you look back at it a lot of those older gen pros in that new wave kind of maybe it wasn't as as easy as it seems it was but they kind of effortlessly merged into that top tier pros and maybe that's because lack of players and lack of skill at the time but that's what it seems to me sure it was definitely just a less mature scene yeah but i mean regardless one thing i want to ask you about because you've seen it progress since 2016 is skill gap at least (laughs) not just in my audience but i think in the general rocket league community it's hard when you're watching RLCS, and even for me, to actually appreciate how skilled you guys are, how fast it is, how automatic all the movement is. And so I wanted to ask you, I mean, for many people, being a GC player is hard. Never mind getting to SSL. I <laughs> still haven't cracked that. Never mind getting top 100. Never mind becoming a bubble player, being, you know, a top tier in six mans. Yeah. And then above that, there's being a pro. And there's levels to being a pro too. Like it goes on and on and on. And like the thing is that getting SSL, to be honest, that's like barely halfway 
on your journey to going pro like it, it straight up is like getting ssl is when like you should be like oh maybe there's a chance you know like th- at that point that's when it's like you're halfway there because after ssl you're like rank b level in terms of six men's and six men's is basically privately sorted like three versus three games with uh comms like communication and discord and so on in six men's there's you have rank b then you have to promote to b plus then rank a then rank x then rank s and like that that in itself is basically a whole new ranking system that you have to climb and that that unlocks and truly opens up basically once you hit ssl or maybe high gc yeah it's always funny when i think about it because it, it's sort of like people got so good at rocket league yeah that an unofficial rank system for the people that were too good that they just went off the chart on the ranked ladder ssl wasn't enough <laughs> a full new rank system was created just for you guys to sort who is the best of the best yeah we we truly just had to make a whole new system to determine that which is is really crazy to think about and that's not to mention rlcs is a thing like that that is its own system that's a whole nother yeah. league above. <laughs> they're like three ranked ladders how do you because because whenever my family asks what i do for a living i just don't even know what to say i'm like i make i play video games i make youtube videos yeah <laughs> how do you explain to like friends family like parents like when they ask you like what do you do and you're like oh i i play professional rocket league like how do you explain like how good you have to be to them yeah so there's not really an easy way to explain it to family and friends i usually just say i make money playing card soccer and don't really go too in depth with my family and just laugh and walk away <laughs> yeah my friends get it since they mostly know what esports is like they're they're, they're kind of in that same generation with me so they, they understand it slightly for my older relatives it's a little more confusing since the esports industry is like pretty new to them so they don't really get it as much especially like with like college and full rides being like given to these esports players like they didn't understand that at all they didn't understand how like i could be holding a controller and a full ride is like gifted to you from that like they they didn't really get that at all and they didn't really understand the levels to the game like when i first hit like gc on xbox i screamed in my room like i was actually so happy and my parents like (laughs) came in to like like they thought i was like hurt or something i don't know they came in and like panicked in the room and i was like I'm fine. Just hit the highest rank in the game. And they thought, like, that that was it. You know, they thought that was the cap. But, like, realistically, a year later, I was asking them to buy me a $2,000 PC, and they thought I was out of my mind. But he- here it is, and that investment has definitely paid off. So they, they don't understand the levels to it. But as I progress, they also progress with their knowledge about it. So kind of evens out. Yeah, it's 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 unreal. It's, it's sort of... um. I mean, all of it is new Mm -hmm. and it's even hard for me to wrap my head around sometimes. I I think Waiton Pilkin explains it really well, but you watch like some of these videos where you see people, it could be anything, it could be Rocket League, it could be, I mean, even professional, real professional sports, even, you know, professional chefs, whatever it is, you watch the games or you watch the show and you think, oh, I, I could do that. Yeah. But when you actually get the controller in your hand, it's like night and day. And, uh, something I wanted to ask you about related to becoming a Rocket League pro? Because I get the comments a lot, you know, that I wish I was a Rocket League pro or, you know, wouldn't it be nice if I was a Rocket League pro? I see a lot of people say things like that. Yeah. I think people think it's like, once you make it, like, it's just easy. Or like the people who are pros, they were just, they were just pros from the start, you know? (laughs) Yeah. But the more I talk to people like you, the more I realize like, yeah, sure, you start out a little bit better than everybody else and you kind of have to have a sense that, oh, you know, this is this is a possibility. Like, I'm better than my friends. Yeah. But like in your eyes, like what type of person do you have to be to get pro? So I think in terms of like, I guess like traits or skills you could say or like good qualities you'd have to like be able to make it to that level, I'd say like strong work ethic is definitely one like, continuing to have that hunger for improvement is definitely a huge uh, quality i'd say that like people people would want to or need to have to make it a strong mentality of course you know not giving up when things get harder and ignoring hate as well dedication and determination is another and that kind of groups in with work ethic but you want to be focused and set on that goal and you want to you want to make sure you're putting in all the effort you can into achieving it and i'd say the final one is connections building and you don't necessarily have to be a people person, 
But when you get to that higher level, it definitely helps out to be able to branch out with your networking and unlock new opportunities. Yeah. So it's sort of like an, it's an hours game at the start. Yeah. Work ethic, mental. But then it's sort of like when you get to you get high enough on the mountain, you need to wave your hands in the air and make sure people see you. <laughs> Exactly. They're not just going to come pick you up. You got to you gotta make sure that you're being seen. I want to bring this conversation back down to earth a little bit and, and put numbers on what we're talking about right now. I looked at your profiles, Anil. 11,571 hours on record, <laughs> 108.7 hours past two weeks. Yeah, <laughs> I grind, man. I grind. <laughs> 108.7 hours past two weeks. If you're playing 110 hours past two weeks, you are sitting at the computer Monday through Friday for 10 hours a day, minimum, playing Rocket League. I don't even know what, how to formulate a question about this. Let me ask you this. How did your lifestyle around Rocket League evolve over the years? I imagine it wasn't 110 hours past two weeks when you picked up the game, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. How did the demands on your time change as you've developed as a player? You know what I mean? Yeah, so I mean, like, obviously now there's kind of an excuse for it because it's an actual job at this point. But like beforehand, I would still play a decent bit. Like it, it would be no hundred hours past two, but like I would still play for like, you know, like four, like maybe three or four hours like every day or so. And this this wasn't even like when I was just like a low rank. This is when I was like rank B or whatever, like grinding to actually go pro. But like before that, like I would just play here and there since like ultimately I wasn't really focused on going pro at the time. I didn't even know it was a possibility possibility so like i was just playing for fun like naturally just playing for fun when i had time whenever but at this point now you you kind of have to build your schedule around rocket league because it takes so much time up and it doesn't have to take that time up and that's why some pros don't play nearly as much as other pros like some pros are on 30 to 40 hours past two weeks which is kind of crazy when you put that in perspective and you think these guys are playing like these guys are getting paid to play and they're putting in 20 or 30 past two so it's like it's definitely different when you compare that to the players who are putting in double, triple that time for the same, if not less pay. It really just depends on how much you want it. And yeah, you really have to build and adjust your whole schedule around Rocket League, which might sound like it sucks. But if you consider how gifted of a job it is and how crazy of a career it is, it makes more sense when you think about it that way. Yeah. Right. I think it's really interesting how you went straight to attitudes and beliefs and mindset. Because a lot of my viewers ask me the question, hey, Luke, what does it take to get SSL? Hey, Luke, what does it take to, you know, go pro or like I know? And I think they, they think I'm going to tell them like, like a mechanic. Like, oh, like if you know these three <laughs> mechanics, then you'll be SSL or you know these three mechanics, you'll be pro. <laughs> but it seems more like for you, what separates like a good player or, or let's even say a great player from somebody who can actually make 10, 20, 30, $100,000 in tournament winnings in this game is the mindset, is the beliefs, is the character traits. Yeah, no, the mindset is is huge, really, because like things are going to get rough at, at any point in a pro career. And at that point, when things do get rough, what you do next is crucial. And that's going to be determined on how much you want it, if you even do want it and how much more work you're still willing to put in. Right. I saw a quote the other day on Twitter. I might butcher it. But it says, the <laughs> world belongs to those who can keep doing without seeing the result of their doing. How do you think that applies to Rocket League? That is so true. Like, when I'm looking back, I'm on, like, six men's and my six men's journey. Like, when I was B+, plus, like, I didn't even think I had improved that much since being rank B and promoting. And then like two months later, I'm rank A and like I'm starting to get rated by like most of the bubble players. It's like I didn't even notice that improvement. I just kept playing the game. It's something that you can't see until you you've stuck with it long enough to where you're like, wait a second. I swear like a few months ago or something like that, I was I was not doing this or I was not this consistent. Right. You don't notice it until you've actually put in enough work to where it's like it's it's a difference that you can see. You're you're not gonna you're not going to see every little inch of improvement, but at one point you'll look back and you'll you'll see where you were and where you are now. It's sort of like when you're stuck in your own your own shoes, looking at looking from your at your own gameplay. You can never spot a change from yesterday to today. Yeah, exactly. Or even like building muscle, for example. Like if you work out for like like a, a week or two, you you might really not see too much gain from that, but. 
if you stick with that for a month, two months, three months, you're going to be like, wait a second, that wasn't like that before. <laughs> like you're, you're going to see the difference eventually. Just you're not going to see it climbing like like if you're going up steps. 100%. When you get to a certain point of the game, it seems like to me, at least the way you described it earlier with the reaching SSL is only being 50% of the way there, your progress only slows. But that doesn't mean it's stopped. It just means it slows. Exactly. Yeah. Whether you're plat and you just got to diamond, whether you're GC and you just got to SSL, or whether you're rank B and you just got B plus, you just have to understand that progress will come even if it's slower and slower and slower. You're just gonna have to fight harder for it. Yep. I just I just always trust the process. It's it's gone me this far, so I'm gonna just gonna keep sticking with it kind of thing. And like it's honestly easier when you haven't hit SSL yet to notice that improvement because like if you're champ and you you know, you go up a few divisions or you go up one thing, you're you're going to think that's improvement. You're going to see that as improvement. But like if you're rank B or something or you're already SSL and like because the six man's ranks, they take a lot longer to grind through and promote out of than a normal like Rocket League rank. And so you're going to see those those jumps in status, I guess, way less. And so that's going to that's going to kind of tell you that the improvement rate is a lot slower, but you just have to stick with it keep grinding it out and trust the process like i said it that's what i've done since i've been rank b i've just trusted the process and kept playing and it it got me all the way to where i am now so yeah so it's 2023 when we're recording this and you started grinding six mans in 21 20 20 2020 yeah 2020 2020 so i mean let, let's say two three years you've been on the six man's ladder i'm sure you've seen lots of players come and go yeah. And feel free to take take either side of this. What are three things in common that you see from players that stay? Or what are three things in common from players that you may have seen fall off or give up or or, or disappear over the years that that sort of didn't make it? So I think I think I'll I'll choose the the, the first option with the players that kind of stay and the similarities I see between them. But I definitely have to say that attitude and like mentality in terms of like grinding like the players who do fall off like you notice that they kind of just start playing the game less and less and they also they don't adapt to any new metas that come and like metas like slowly slowly change it's not something to where it just jumps out and you have to learn it so like every day you have to be like you have to be trying to take that next step and trying to adapt to what all the other pros are doing because you're all trying to improve together at a rate and you might be trying to improve faster than people but the important part is that you kind of stay with the pack and if possible go ahead of the pack but the the people who stay are the ones who are able to adapt the most i'd say adaptation is really key when it comes to that yeah and some people have it easier than others and like naturally have developed good mechanics and a consistent game sense to where they don't have to play as much but not everyone has that luxury and have to continue to grind every day to stay where they're at and even pass other like pros so that's what i've noticed yeah yeah that's interesting because you know a lot of people looking in might see someone like you and say you know you made it now that you're a pro you know you're done but if i've learned anything from these first 10, 20 minutes is what once you get pro, that's just the start, right? It really is. Yeah, no, it is just the start. Like it keeps getting harder and harder. And like once you become pro, honestly, that's when like networking matters the most. You you might argue that bubble also it matters the most. They they kind of both are the same, but you really just have to stay on top of your game and keep building those connections. Yeah. I want to pivot. I want to flip it a little bit because I think a lot of people want to talk about the Rocket League side of it and the tactical stuff. And oh, you gotta grind, you gotta play rank twos. You got to develop your game sense, but I want to zoom out for a second because most pros don't talk about this. What does it take to stay pro or, or be able to compete for two, three years? And I'm not just talking like inside Rocket League. I'm talking about like mentally and, and, and lifestyle. Like how do you have to structure your day as a pro in 2023? This one can get really dangerous because like for me, for example, there's days where I go on a rough twos like law session. And, like, that single-handedly affects my whole mood and, like, ruins the day for me. Like, low-key. Like, it's not healthy at all, but that's just how it is since your career and job is based so much on, like, ranked, for example. Because, like, now Six Men's has kind of not been as valued for, like, bubble players trying to go pro. It's mostly been twos. But overall, I think the main thing is that you have to remind yourself how good you really are and you have to have that confidence. But you can't be too confident to where you get complacent, I think, is is the main thing. That... That confidence is key, but you have to have a balance to where it's not 
making you too confident to where you're not playing the game or where you're not trying to continue to improve. Totally. It, it, it's, it's interesting. When you're a pro, there's these two like forces that you have to battle mentally every day. On the one hand, you have to feel like you're better than everybody else. You have to believe that you can be better than everybody else. You have to have this like sense of confidence. But at the same time, yep. you have to have this sort of insecurity. At the same time that you think you can be better than everybody, you have to be insecure about how you're not there yet. Exactly. Yep. And all the while that you're battling this, you have to be confident on one hand. You sort of have to stay insecure so you don't get complacent. On the other hand, you have to battle all of that with sort of controlling your impulses, focusing and doing the same thing every day. I mean, it's just you just have to pour more hours and not fall off the wagon. Like in terms of lifestyle, how has your mentality changed since when you were just, oh, this might be something that you know i i, I want to do maybe you start to see early signs that you could be good to like now like what does your week look like do you have to is it wake up rank twos for two hours <laughs> try not try not to rage quit train more come back like how do you not fall off the wagon you know what i mean yeah so the thing about being a pro is you don't have a set amount of hours like in your pay you know it's not like you you, you have these 40-hour work weeks. You make your own hours besides scrims. Of course, scrims are scheduled, but scrims are a very small portion of what you should be playing the game. Yeah, you, you make your own hours so you can decide how much or how little you want to put in. It really depends on how much you want it. And that wraps in with the mentality too. But like, for example, like me, like I, I don't have like a schedule of which like, oh, I'm going to play twos at this time, ones at this time. You know, I'm just, it's whatever I'm feeling. And like, most of the time it's twos because I don't go on very like big like lost streaks where I'm losing, losing, losing. So like I'll keep playing for a long time, like sometimes have like six hour sessions literally. But like it varies from pro to pro and player to player on really how much you want it, how much time you have that you can put in and what you make with that time. Right. It's sort of like you need to log hours. That's a non-negotiable. When mm -hmm. you log those hours and what those hours are is up to you. Yep. But there's always that kind of looming pressure of like, you need you need to spend them well because there are only so many and everybody else has this, every other pro has the same hours and some are behind and they're putting more hours in than you and some are already ahead of you and they're putting in the same hours as you. So it's just this constant race. I mean, there's so much to get into when it when it comes to how your training has, has evolved. And I, I want to talk about like how you've improved later on. Yeah. But given everything you told me about the stress, the mental side my question for you Zanil, is sort of why like why do you continue to play rocket league professionally and, and, and why do you continue to go after it day after day i mean it just seems like it's a mountain that the peak just gets higher up the, the higher you climb right yeah so given all of the the downs on on the side of things like the the stress and the strain that that job can put on you playing esports professionally is like just such a dream job to me that to put that into perspective of how much of a dream job it is for me it's it's not hard at all to give my all into trying to stay at the top given all of the negatives i still have no problem whatsoever just like putting all my motivation and still grinding day after day like money and brand aside i'm naturally a competitive person so not only do i find competing extremely fun but like there's also a sense of security and sustainability in it as a job. So like, how could I not make as much of the opportunity as possible? You know, like this Rocket League career isn't going to be here forever for me. So I need to do as much as possible. And I owe that to myself to do as much as possible and put my all into it to make it as beneficial for me as I can. Or else I'm going to like, I'm going to look back and I'm going to be like, dang, I could have done so much more with that. So I just want to make sure I don't regret it. And I make, make as much out of it as possible. Wow. I talked with apparently Jack nine months ago, a month after he moved from EU to NA, when <laughs> him, Chronic, and Nali debuted. Basically, it had just uh, they had just announced they were teaming. As you may or may not know, now they went on to win the fall major and pretty much dominate the the winter as well. After that, and and I mean most of the lands for that matter. Yeah. And he said almost exactly what you just said. <laughs> Yeah, and that's the thing. Some people realize the opportunity they've been given, some people don't. Right now, it's kind of a sketchy point in esports. Like, the esports economy isn't doing so great, and just in general in Rocket League, it's it's a little bit sketchy right now. And before this, like, if, if you asked me, like, like, six months ago when I was, like, 
stably with the team on an, on an org perfectly fine you know like having these tournaments every other day like i probably wouldn't have realized just the how good of a situation that i currently am in but now that i've kind of seen the rough points in a career and the good points it puts into perspective just how good i had and have it which just pushes me more to make sure that i stay there 100 percent. a lot of pros and i won't talk about names but i've been i've been to lands and while i'm there there are there are two types of pros i talk to there are sort of those that i talk to and, and you can tell there's a certain air about them they're sort of switched on is how i like to see it and then there's sort of another type of pro that i see at these lands sometimes and it, it it's sort of like um it sort of seems like they're at recess it seems like they're on break it's like their party their three-day party weekend yeah and it's funny because all the rocket league pros who make it play for a season play for nine months play for 12 months right they at least get a 12 month run through the circuit yeah mm -hmm. very few play on a big name team for two years three years and four years and beyond is is a very select few yeah so it really does blow my mind when i see what it takes at the highest level because i don't think enough people who looking in just watching the clips and and you know watching watching for fun and saying you know oh, i could do that you know i i, I could hit that at, at my rank really understand how many hours have to go in on a weekly basis just to stay relevant you know and it's crazy how like people don't really realize what like roughly like being a pro is and like what results that really takes for example like you could take like a top 18 player right now and like People literally call them a bubble player because they didn't make the major. People don't really understand that, like, for the most part, if you're top 16 in your region, you're a pro, right? You're playing in all the RLCS events, you're getting paid to do it, and you're probably on an organization that's also paying you to do it. So, and, and this isn't the majority of the community. Like, most people do understand this, but some people don't get that, like, a good result doesn't have to be making a LAN or making a major. While that's ultimately the final goal, if you're playing in these events, you're still a pro, you know, like if you're, if you're top 16, you're still, you're still a pro. Like that's, that's the one crazy thing to me is some people don't realize that. And some people think that you have to be on an NRG to be pro, which that really isn't the case. And it's, yeah, it just kind of blows my mind that some people think, think about it that way. Yeah. Or even, I mean, <laughs> even at that, you go on Twitter and you see people and you see the Twitter trolls writing about how NRG is washed and it's like, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> hold up. Do you even understand how hard it is to create a winning Rocket League team, much less a team that's top eight for like three years with an unchanged roster, all three players sticking together? Like, do you even have any idea how unheard of that is? And then uh, but people on Twitter are like, energy washed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, like they don't they don't really get the levels to it. Like ju just because you're not a top pro, that doesn't mean you're not a pro. There's different levels to it. Some people don't really get that. And they're, they're going to say that to you and it's going to get to your head. But sure, you just have to you just have to ignore it. Right. And you know what? It, it, it reminds me of something because something I often hear from my audience actually is these I, I wish statements. You know, I, I wish I was a Rocket League pro. You know, wouldn't, be not, wouldn't it be nice? Or, yeah. you know, I wish I was a YouTuber, but, you know, I'm, I'm not good on camera. Or I wish fill in the blank, but fill in the blank, right? Mm -hmm. And part of me is, is a little bit sad when I hear that because... I think a, a good chunk of people, maybe you listening right now, have this impression, and, and I definitely thought this before, I guess I grew my YouTube channel or, or even talking to you as a pro, you know, you, you look at people who are, who are just at the top of the, top, you know, at the top of the mountain, let's say, like you, when it comes to Rocket League. And you just look at that person and you just you just think to yourself, ah, oh, he must have just woken up and <laughs> he was good at Rocket League. But no, it's the more I talk with people like you, the more I realize like it was a steady increase. And maybe there were periods where it grew faster than others, but it took week after week after week after week after year after year after year after year. And that's just to get to where you are today. I can speak to what it takes to gain a following on YouTube. You know, mainly what I say to people is start by uploading 20 videos and and then come back to me and ask me what you should do to grow your youtube channel yeah <laughs> but i'm more interested to know from you because i know a lot of people have might have that dream of you know i want to be a professional rocket league player i want i want to be a pro gamer how did you take your dream of being a pro pull it out of the air and you know drag it down to the present from just being this wish to 
actually being a part of your life. Yeah, so I always hear people say that like they wish they were pro or they wish they were SSL and while like you could view it as like oh like they they don't realize the effort and like all the time that goes into it it honestly makes me kind of happy and like this might come off as egotistical but it's like it it just puts a smile on your face and makes you feel accomplished when you already have a certain skill or profession that so many others desire that just makes you smile and be proud of your accomplishment but as for spe- like specifically how i made this dream a reality i only had my mind on going pro when i was like you know i first hit gc in like season eight like the first og season eight and then like you know i got my pc started playing six fans but like before all of that i didn't even focus on it i was just i was just playing the play because i was naturally competitive and i i enjoyed playing the game but it, it was like a cloud that was slowly vanishing and that like behind that cloud was like the reality of being able to go pro that was slowly vanishing and i was i was realizing that that was actually reachable and the the more i grinded the better i got the higher up the ranks i moved the closer it seemed and that just pushed me more to work harder and to get there and to get where I wanted to get. Right. I think we all have some things that we're naturally a little bit better at. And it's sort of like you have to you have to look at that thing in your life. And it's not about, you know, one day you wake up and you decide I want to be pro. It's you're working a little bit towards it every day. And every day you sort of start to see it appear. And it's closer and closer and closer. And it's just about not stopping while you it's just continuing to walk. I'm going to pivot because a lot of people are probably watching at this point and they're like, great, Luke, you've got me woo-wooed up. <laughs> I'm I'm ready to go pro. They, they want the tactics. All right. What's what's the rank up secret? You know, what's the SSL secret? I want to know from you, Zanil. Let's, let's, let's talk a little bit about the tactical because I think this is fun. Um, yeah. Many people are watching. You may or may not know that Zanil, you started making YouTube videos. You've been sharing some of your advice on how you've improved. Let's talk training. If you had to pick top 10, top five, whatever number it may be, most influential training packs, drills, workshop maps that have helped you get to where you're at today. What are they? I can give you the codes for these specific ones later, but I'll just run through the names and the authors of them. But first one for me is I'll do custom training packs first. I have some workshop maps after, but for custom training packs, my top one is the wall to air dribble by IP Joker. It straight up spawns you right next to the ball going up the wall almost like on the ramp. For me, that one's so important because there's so much variation in what you can do you can go up that wall you can do a flip reset an air dribble a ceiling shot a pogo you can literally do anything with that setup and the reason why free play is so good is because it it allows you variety in what you can do and it changes up the situation and that's why i like that work that uh custom training pack is because it's basically free play but free play for air dribbling and working on solo plays and mechanical aerial kind of things so that's why i find that one so good yeah the second one is Double Tap Playground by Whey Protein. This one is also similar to the Wall to Air Dribble one where it pops the ball up in the air and you're behind it and it allows you to go for any kind of double tap. I find this one so good is because it also has variation in what kind of double taps you go for and how you set them up. Like you can go to the ceiling and like fall back down and shoot it. You can just go for a normal double tap. You can try to go for a reset double tap or you, you like hit it off the back wall and go for a reset and then shoot it. But it also has a lot of variation in what you can do. The third one is called LJ Shooting Needs Help. <laughs> <laughs> is that a reference to LJ? Yeah, yeah and I think <laughs> LJ actually used this. Like this was <laughs> this was a shooting pack made by LJ's friend Astro for him. So he uh and the, like I'm pretty sure he grinded that and a lot of people did, but yeah, and LJ's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I, I think it works. <laughs> it might work. It basically just sets up a bunch of shots for you and. Your goal is to play some top corner. Even if you miss, don't focus on just shooting it like weak or whatever, but your goal is to try to slot a top corner. And it sets it up in a way that makes it a lot easier to slot slot a top corner than you usually would. So those are my custom training packs I'd suggest. Let me let me get on to the, the workshop maps. So the first workshop map is called Air Dribble Hoops by TJ Brother. It's basically just an air dribble workshop map, but it's like a, a hoop that you have to air dribble in from different ramps of different sizes and avoid different obstacles. It definitely helps with getting your air dribbles better and perfecting your air dribbles. Uh, second one is basically any of the less dreams maps. Like all of them are extremely helpful. You get a thousand different videos would tell you that rings maps are crazy beneficial at first and less rings maps are definitely like extremely helpful for any aerial uh, control another one would be aim training by coco not many people know about this one to my knowledge maybe they do but it's it's basically just a shooting workshop map and there's like a green box 
in front of like a big red wall. That green box changes after you after you hit it and you score, but you can change it different sizes, where the location is, where the ball is, how fast stuff like that so it allows you to increase and improve your shooting accuracy the uh second to last one i have is speed jump boost by dmc it's one of those matches where you have to you have unlimited boost or maybe you don't and you have to hit these like rings to get boost but uh you basically just like fly through these levels avoid different obstacles stuff like that and it, it also helps with car control and being able to maintain stability in the air and the final workshop map I have is Dribble 2 Overhaul by Digby. And this is just your, your classic, uh, just like ground dribbling workshop map where you just have to uh, dribble it on your car, you know, like side to side, avoid some obstacles, get it to the next like goal or checkpoint. And this is super helpful if you if you don't really have good dribbling control on your car because it helps you learn the sweet spots for dribbling where, where you want to keep the ball in your, your car or what part of the hood. But yeah, those are those are all my custom training packs and workshop maps that I've used a good bit and that helped me improve. Love it. So you're saying for, for any player, you can't go wrong. Yeah, the, the LJ shooting needs help one and maybe the double tap one are going to be harder for the low, lower ranks, but they're still doable and they'll still help you improve. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I like to ask pros questions like this because it sort of demystifies it. We're all playing with a PS4 controller, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. You know, we're all <laughs> we're all on PC, hopefully. <laughs> you know, we're all doing the same training packs. It's like the, the the pros don't have access to anything different than you do. They just do it 10 times as much, <laughs> you know. Yeah. That's awesome, man. You came prepared. Thank you. <laughs> Got you. And uh on that note, let's keep rolling with, with some viewer questions. So in preparation and anticipation for our call today, I went over to my Instagram and I made a story uh, because I know many people would do anything for a chance to ask somebody like of your level questions on how to improve. I'm trying to hide my enthusiasm and play it cool. <laughs> but I want to uh, I want to do them. I want to do them a solid and relay some of the questions. Are you down to go into viewer questions for, for, for the end of this? Yeah. Cool. Zanil, what do we really need to become a pro? And then in, in parentheses, he put mechanics, mentality, influence. What is it? So I'd say that all three are like very helpful to becoming a pro they're kind of pillars of what you need but i'd say mentality slightly less than the other two and i'm not talking mentality as in like your work ethic like I'm, I'm not saying that work ethic is included in mentality there but it seems like these days pro teams don't care as much about your mental in terms of like oh we still got this you know like like that kind of mentality but they, they care more about raw skill and how good of friends you are with them, sadly. So I'd say mechs and influence. And mechs are definitely up there, along with game sense, of course. But mechs and game sense are up there. Influence, I'd say slightly behind them. Influence is mostly needed in uh, the, the later ranks. But out of those three, mechs are most important than influence, than mentality. If we're talking about work ethic included in that mentality, then I'd say mentality is definitely higher, if not first. But yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think that's fair. Uh, ooh, good one. Controversial topic, actually. I know some people never do this and some people obsess. Zanil, did you ever analyze your own replays on your way up? Analyzing my own replays, it was definitely a part of my improvement, but I didn't really do it until I started playing six men's around grand champion level. So the key to benefiting from reviewing your own replays is to only critique yourself. I don't care if your teammate literally slotted it top shelf of your own net. You got to look <laughs> at what you could have done differently to prevent it. And obviously that's an exaggeration, but you get the idea. You basically only want to look at your mistakes and what you can do differently. Right. So you've done it occasionally, but really obsess about your own mistakes or else you're not going to get much out of it. Yeah, I didn't really do it that much when I was like climbing up the lower ranks. But like once I started playing six men's and scrims and stuff like that, that's when I really started doing it a lot. And it can still be extremely beneficial in any ranked modes, like obviously. But me personally, I didn't start hard focusing on it until I was getting that threes practice. Yeah, that makes sense. What do I need to practice to get pro, parentheses, to keep up with the meta? So I'd say that whenever a new mechanic does get popularized, you're probably better off learning it as soon as possible. And that's as long as you have the more important basic fundamentals down first. But because people are going to 
they're going to learn this new mechanic. And if they know it and you don't, that puts you at a disadvantage. It's like going into a job application and you and the other person have basically the same qualities or you're, you're equally tied, but that one person has one thing that you don't, they're gonna, that it's going to put them ahead of you. Right. I think this person was looking for one mechanic. What do I, what is the one mechanic I need to get pro? <laughs> hey, I might have put it up. I might have might have made it a little bit more confusing. <laughs> but <laughs> no, I think I that's uh that's the point. <laughs> that's the point. Yeah. If it was just one mechanic, I mean, I don't know. I don't think we'd be talking to Neil. I'd just DM you. I'd ask I'd ask what the secret is and I'd keep it to myself. Yo, what's that one <laughs> mech I need? <laughs> Yeah. Here's a rich one. On that note, <laughs> five easiest mechanics. I don't. Why are we asking this a pro? Come on, my. I'm disappointed in my audience. I'm disappointed. <laughs> five mechanics to go from platinum to champ. <laughs> Flat to champ. Okay, so we're 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 talking to a pro here, guys. You want to ask the pro pro questions, not plat questions. <laughs> I'd say flicks, power shots, double taps, and air dribbles. Those two are. A little more advanced, but to be honest, you're going to need them, and they don't have to be super complicated. They could be easy air dribbles, two or three touch ones, and low, slow double taps, but flicks, double taps, power shots, air dribbling, and speed flips, I would say. Speed flips, yeah. Zaniel, what helps you stay motivated? Honestly, just the will to improve and to continue getting better. I, I said this earlier, but just knowing that Every minute that I'm not on the game playing, someone else is, and they're trying to overtake me. So just keeping that in mind, it it makes me get on the game and keep improving so that I can either get better than these players and pass them up or stay at the same level as them. So that, that's kind of it. And that, that also ties in with my naturally like competitive nature. So like I just want to win. And also, like when I was growing up, I would play these mobile games. And this is kind of random, but I would play these mobile games where like, they'd be like simulators where you have to like make more money and then upgrade and get more money. And you see that progress and like, yeah, you, you kind of get up there. Cookie clicker. Don't get me started. Yeah. Yeah. Cookie clicker, literally. And like that kind of ties in with Rocket League because you, you want to get better and then get better results. And then you use those better results, get a better team or get, you know, whatever it is, like improve your team you're on and you keep getting better. So it's just like you keep taking those steps up and you see the work pay off eventually when you get the results that you were looking for. Mm, yeah, I like that. It's sort of like you have to uh, you have to gamify your improvement. You have to get excited about, you know, in Rocket League, we don't have these characters. We're not slaying dragons. <laughs> yeah. We're not getting, we're not leveling up. But yeah. you, gotta get, you gotta get excited about it. You have to feel like you're leveling up, whatever that is for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's an interesting one. I, I think this... This guy is trying to compare his progress to yours. This will be fun to know. How do you, do you know this? How long did it take you, Zaniel, to reach GC and then SSL and then six mans and then pro? So I don't have the specific like hours. I can maybe guess, like I can maybe estimate them, but sure. I reached Grand Champ around OG season eight. Like season eight, the, the first season eight is when I reached Grand Champion. And I don't really, I don't know how many hours I was on, but this was on Xbox. So like, I'm, I'm not too sure. But when SSL came out, I, I instantly got it my first season because like I was already GC and I was top 100 because, you know, when GC was the highest rank, all you could do is try to climb to, to top 100. So I instantly got SSL the first season it was added just because I was already like a top 100 GC at the time. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I... And then in terms of six mans, once I got rank B, like like rank checked into rank B because I was a uh, I was SSL. It took me literally like eight months to get B plus. Like that was a grind. Once I got B plus, I think it took me three months to get rank A, and then four months to get X, and then I think another four months to get rank S. So like there was this one year where I just went from a rank B random, not even bubble player, to basically pro or on the verge of pro. It's so hard to place it because. Where everybody's trying to figure out like how many hours they're at if they're on track now i'm bummed out man you've just been ssl from the start <laughs> you had it easy it was free you didn't have to do anything <laughs> no I'm playing. i will say though that like most pros are around 10k plus hours so i can't really put like a ballpoint on what's good for every rank because people improve at their own rate and that's fine right Sometimes comparison is uh, it's a dangerous. Yeah, it can it can do more harm than good sometimes. It's good to know that you're improving at a good rate, but at the same time, you might get discouraged from 
continuing to improve because your rate might be slower than someone else's. Yeah. And there's always ways to improve that too. I think your journey says it best. I mean, you went from SSL to, to B plus or to B, sorry. And you said it took nine months, you know, everybody improves at their own rate and you might have seasons where you're peaking and you might have seasons where it feels like you 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 forgot how to ride the bike right yeah exactly yeah yeah it's just about knowing like hey it's gonna take me 10k hours to get there and if i want to get there i'm gonna put my head down for 10k hours and i'm not gonna get down on myself if i don't get it before there right exactly and a friend of mine this is this is like something wise a friend of mine told me but he was like he basically said to me like because I, I was going through it at the time and like like I, I had like a bad result was in my head. And he basically told me like in three years, if I told you you were guaranteed guaranteed to be on a top pro team, would you grind for the next three years? And like my answer was obviously yes. So like that just puts in that kind of keeps you motivated to be like if you trust the process, it will work. You will get there. You just have to believe in yourself. Mm, yep. 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 It's uh that reminds me exactly of something I heard um in the in the youtube sphere which is if i could guarantee you you would have a hundred thousand youtube subscribers but you would need to upload to nobody for 10 years would you do it and the reason people don't get to 100k is not because they weren't going to get to 100k it's because they expected it to come after three months and then they stop exactly yeah zanil do you believe there is an age limit to be an ssl slash pro I don't think there's an age limit in terms of, you know, those studies that point out reaction time increasing as you age. I don't think there's a limit there, but I think the limitation comes with having less time to grind due to real life responsibilities. And when you're trying to break into the pro scene from bubble as an older player, and that's hard because you don't have that prodigy title that for some reason the pro scene rates so highly. So like, I don't think that there's a, a certified age limit that you have to get to be SSL or pro. Definitely not SSL. You can get SSL at any age. Pro, it's going to be harder because there's going to be bias towards the younger players over you, but that doesn't that, that doesn't mean it has to stop you. Yeah, it's sort of like um, age is a bit of a tiebreaker, but if you are if you have the skill, then and you're better, you're better. Exactly. Yeah. Since pro careers are so short, what would you like to do after retirement? Ooh, so actually, I want to talk about this a good bit. So. A lot of people don't realize just how much you can branch out after having a pro career. So like, I'm going to just list a few possible things that you can branch out to after your career if you network and brand right. So first is College Rocket League as a pro. This would most likely give you a full ride scholarship, allowing you to get a degree while being pro. It's the first option. You could go for a degree and branch out into whatever career field you're interested in. Second is a general manager or overall staff for an organization. A lot of my previous general managers at the organizations I was under, they used to be pro players for other esports games. So like, it's definitely a very doable career field if you want to go into that. A uh, third one, coach or manager, because a lot of retired pros move on to becoming pro coaches and it allows you to stay in the scene as, you know, still, still involved, still interactive. And the final one is content. Some pros who made content during their pro career and took advantage of the opportunity and expanded their brand uh, like during this, we're able to go full-time content creation after. Uh, Rizzo is one. Squishy will most definitely be one after he, like, he retires once his career is over because he's got a crazy brand. So those are those are all different branches and ways you can, I guess, pathways you can go after your career. Sure. There's a, there's a lot of options and they're all very good. Which one are you leaning towards? Or should we save it till we're off air? That's... That's tough. I I don't really know, man. I mean, I'm I'm trying the content. We'll we'll see how it goes. The coach manager, I don't I don't know if uh if that would work for me. General manager sounds interesting to an organization and I'm getting my degree, degree right now uh with at Northwood under a full ride. So like that's like always going to be an option for me. I I'm the first one to go to college in my family. And so, well, I still wanted to go to college. That wasn't really a, a decision. <laughs> that was more of I just had to go to college, but I'm fine with it. I wanted to go anyways, and it's kind of a a safe way, I guess, a a, a backup if or when other things don't work out. Mm, sure. Well, until then, hopefully we can uh, focus on the on on the actual gameplay. Focus on the pro career. Yeah, we're we're gonna we're gonna stick with the pro career for now. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, if you've made it to this point watching the video, go show Zanil some love and help out with the content. Your videos are massively underrated, man. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Especially for somebody who's been uploading for three, four months. I mean, 
Yeah, I, I edit myself. I'm not great at it, but saves a uh, saves any any spare uh, spare budget. No way, you edit them yourself. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! Come on, please, somebody go click on go like his video. Go 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 click on his channel. Click the subscribe button. Appreciate it, brother. <laughs> Zaniel, we've talked about pros, pro scene, staying pro, tactics. Is there anything else you wanted to leave the audience with before we wrap? I guess I just want to. Cause, cause, man, the, there's some issues with the pro scene that honestly really bug me, and it's, it's just how like quickly you can be like faded out, man. Like it's so, it's so crazy how in the blink of an eye you can be underrated and almost forgotten. Like for example, to put this into perspective for some people, like Hoxer, who is currently on SSG, basically the best team in North America. They were at Worlds. They were at Major. Basically, the best team in NA. Before the the split before Hawkster joined SSG, actually the both splits before he missed out on like three regionals. Like he he was missing out on regionals with his previous teams. He made some, didn't make others, but the man who was missing out on regionals, a split after that, joined the best team in North America. And that wasn't because before he was bad or he improved a ton. It was literally because he just didn't get the opportunity that he deserved. And that's to just kind of show that. Some people really underrate players or almost forget them in a sense or think that they're they're washed or not improving or not at that level when in reality they just need chances that they're not being given. Mm, yeah, sort of like we need to get out of this clicking up, this high school... Uh... And even Chronic, everyone says Chronic is an example. And that's that's a little different because Chronic, was he did have opportunities, but at the same time... Even before that, I think he was still good enough for a top 16 team, but he wasn't getting any of those until he finally was. But yeah. Yeah. Man, esports is a nightmare. That's, that's a statement we can all agree on. It's, all, it's not a nightmare. It's a mess. It's a mess. It's chaos. Yes, that's it's what it chaos. is. It's chaos. Yep. That's a better word. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that was a journey. You want to go get some water? Play some twos? <laughs> Might be time to end up the twos. <laughs> <laughs> Zaniel, thanks so much for coming on, man. Really appreciate your time. <laughs> thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, if you're still watching right now and the end card's going on the screen right now, click the end card. Click Zaniel's video. You can go watch it, like, subscribe. Hey, click that, click that. <laughs> so say, go on to Zaniel's channel. Say, I am writing because Luke told me if I don't, um, he will block me from the, your channel, <laughs> which I will, actually. Not a joke. <laughs> uh, no yeah thanks, thanks for coming on man that's great appreciate you bro